but I know you. You but know me. These these people don't know you. <laughs> what do you want? The thirty second Wikipedia? I mean, they probably yeah. know they probably know you more than they do me, honestly. In my spare time, uh, in the last few months, I've started doing at the age of thirty five Brazilian jiu jitsu. So oh, I'm a thirty five yes. year old white belt with a sore lower back. That's me. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, it's it's going to be a better story when I start jiu jitsu um, after my forty fifth birthday. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, I'm Mario. Um, I am uh, missing my beautiful co-host, but I brought a, another beautiful, uh, uh, brought a beautiful guest speaker today. His name is Jesse Showalter. He will be on with us on the Dadpreneur podcast today. And we're going to be talking about life. We're going to be talking about work. We're going to talk about um, the lack of uh, the illusion of balance in life and balance and work and entrepreneurialism. And um, I've known Jesse for quite a good many years. He's uh, got an amazing YouTube channel and that, is, that has been growing like crazy over the past couple years. Um, actually, the last past year has been nuts. Um, and so he talks about all things UX, UI design. Uh, if you want to have a, uh, just kind of an, a YouTube education of uh, great UX, UI design, just go on there and he's got some amazing uh, videos to walk you through that. Uh, we're going to talk, be talking about uh, family and entrepreneur stuff, and, and that's it. Here we go. So, uh, yeah, uh, my name is Jesse Showalter. Um, in that beautiful, I think was mentioned multiple times, beautiful yeah. intro you gave me. Uh, yeah, I'm a designer. I do uh, UI design, UX design. It's kind of what I specialize in. Um, and I've been doing it for a little bit over a decade. I have a YouTube channel where I teach design, front-end development, uh, and I just talk about life stuff in general. Um, so that's kind of my big things on YouTube is design code and life. And uh, I, am, I was living in Honolulu, Hawaii for like 16 years, but just recently relocated to Austin, Texas, which is pretty rad. Just kind of give us a little bit of a uh, uh, background of what you've been doing recently as far as like work. Talk about, uh, talk about work and then talk about your kind of side hustle, hustle, hustleness um, that you've been, doing, <laughs> you've been doing for a little while. Sure. You want, you want the side hustle or you want that side, side, side I want, hustle? I want, I want like, all the sides. You know I want all the sides. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, for the past three years, uh, two and a half to three years, I was working for a startup based out of Honolulu. Um, uh, so iOS and Android application and uh, was kind of like the, one of the main designers on the team doing ugh, anything because it's startup world. So anything between UI design, web design, front end development, some days I'd be doing animation or you know, video production or just all sorts of things. So wearing lots of different hats there. And that's kind of been a consistent trend for most of my life. I feel like doing lots of many things just because those are the situations I find myself in. Um, but that's what I've been doing for the last three years. And I, j I just found out today that that, that uh, job has come to an end. Ooh. So startups are... That's, you know, they're not a guarantee. So for <laughs> my road has ended there. Um, but what's cool is that simultaneously over the last two and a half or three years, um, it's like two and a half, almost three years ago, I decided to start a YouTube channel and start focusing a little bit more on um, my own personal brand. I hate that term, personal brand, <laughs> but more like what type of value could I bring to the world personally? right? Outside of yeah. an office or a job or whatever. Hey, what can I just bring by myself? And so um, it was kind of started out as a, an exercise in consistency because I'm a really inconsistent person by nature. So <laughs> I told my wife that I had interest in doing it. And she said, fine, do it for two years and I'll clear the space and the time for you uh, to spend extra time making videos, doing all that kind of, you know, writing content, creating content, and let's see what happens in two years without any sort of expectation. So that's what I've been doing is putting out two videos almost every single week for the past three years. Um, and at the same time, um, <laughs> I, yeah, at the same time, I've been having a lot of cool conversations with people from the content that I create. So um, that has kind of been the side hustle and it's manifested itself, I guess, in a lot of different ways, but that's the, the main 
primary yeah. road or focus of the side hustle is let's just create content that revolves around a specific niche, which is designed for me and then niche down even more. I want to make content for people who were like me 12 years ago was at that time reading design blogs on how to use Photoshop. Like people who are just getting into the industry, like mm -hmm. content's really evergreen. So people just tend to start talking about simple things and then slowly it gets more advanced, more technical. Whereas all those people who are now still coming into the industry as brand new people, it's they're like, where do we find all that beginner content? So not that I'm trying to stay with nothing but beginner content, but those are the people tend to like, you know, come to my channel is yeah. they're looking for information on how to get started in their career or tools or skill sets kind of stuff. A, I noticed that you say niche and not niche. So kudos yeah. there. Well, um, I'm, bo <laughs> I'm bougie like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say niche. <laughs> yeah, you're, you are bougie. So, so um, you're, you're just focusing on that newcomer, the kid coming out of school or the kid really wanting to learn how to code, the, um, the not even kid, just the, the person that is really just new coming into that, um, coming into that space. With that, um, why, why did you really want to just completely focus there? Was there, is there a deeper reason for that? Do you, do you like mentoring? What, what's, what's the, what's the kind of like cause? Yeah, I like, I like, mentorship i like you know anything that's like relational learning i i tend to i'm really horrible at um well a few things number one I, it's hard for me to learn things unless i get my hands dirty get my hands on and start out doing those bare bones basics like basics is what is super important to me to get going with anything and i also had some pretty awesome people like yourself who oh. spent some time with me early on because you were like you know one of my mentors like the person who took any little amount of time and sat down and went open up illustrator try to draw, draw a freaking bezier curve and try to put text on that path like what and so i think that there once and and we were just talking about this i think before we even started recording the podcast but like getting up to speed on something is the hardest part of that learning curve it's a yeah. really steep curve to understand basics and fundamental design principles and how to use the tool and how to understand it's like walking into a room where everybody's talking about a topic and you just feel like such a schmuck. I hate that. I don't like that. Even in real life, when I see somebody walk in a room and they feel so out of place, they're the person I want to go talk to and go, welcome, come on in. Can I explain this to you? You know, like, um, yeah. and I'm, like I said, I'm doing, I 35 years old, first time ever doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like when I walk into a room, I'm like, I need somebody to teach me how to tie my belt. I know I'm 35 and I'm <laughs> capable of doing stuff. But this is a whole different world. Like, you know, or like when you walk into, into your first, you know, training session of jujitsu, it's like, is somebody here going to explain the rules? Can I pull hair? Can I bite? Can I punch <laughs> you in the throat? What is allowed here? How much and blood can we, can we actually get into? Exactly. Right? But, and, and thankfully it's like, that is a, that is a space where people, that's just part of the culture. It's really yeah. cool to see like that people welcome you in and say, here's how you do this. Here's how you tie your belt. Here's how you bow before you get on the mat. Here's why. And it's like, where is that in the creative space? Everybody's yeah. so busy doing their own thing, building their own empire, doing their own thing. It's like, is anybody turning around and going, I remember what it was like when I was waiting tables and using a Filipino bootleg version of Photoshop 7 to try to make <laughs> <laughs> junky band flyers. That was and the like, best, that was the best uh, bootleg. Best well. time of my life, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, but how helpful it was to have anybody even offer me some sort of expertise time or even encouragement, like, hey, you know, this sucks right now, and you're using way too much drop shadow, but we all do that, bro. Just keep going. Like, <laughs> can't tell you how helpful that is. <laughs> you're, we, you have too much drop shadow here. It's, it's just, yeah. let's just stop. Like, stop hey, Jesse, you know, you don't need to put grunge texture on everything, right? <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah, not, yeah, that's helpful. Not everything should be rusted and dirty. Just exactly. Sometimes just text. On, on, yeah. On. So I, I tend to like, I revolve around those people and it's like, I just, I think that that's the most frustrating time. It's when a lot of people bail, like, yeah, you know, like I've taught a lot of people how to play guitar. It's the biggest time for people to bail on learning how to play guitar is one, if they have a cheap $50 guitar where the action on the string is too far away from the fretboard, it's really hard to press your fingers down and make any sort of music. Yep. So if they just had a, a little bit more of a decent guitar to work with, it'd be better. But then also they just need somebody there to encourage them. It's really just muscle memory, but it's about somebody going, all right, show me that G chord again. Oh, that's really good. 
yeah, no, it sounds like garbage, but no, you're doing good. You're making good progress. Oh, your like, finger's in the right place. Yeah, Do good. just keep just, going, you know? Uh, how has life changed over the last, so you said three, three and a half years ago? It's like so when you years. started, yeah. I remember, I remember yeah. you telling me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing this. And then I remember you said, hey, I filmed my first two YouTube episodes this week. And I was like, oh, right on. And, yeah, I remember that the, and I remember those episodes. I was like, whoa, all right, cool. You know, oh, these are brutal. They're amazing. <laughs> Everybody needs to go find those two episodes, actually. They need oh, to please. Find the, yeah. first, the earliest episodes of Jesse Show Walter on YouTube. Oh, amazing. Uh, uh, what kept you going? Um, with that, I, I, I talked to a lot of people and I talked to a lot of people about like um, mindset stuff and like mentoring and things like that. So I, I put a lot of that um, content out um, and it's just kind of like an extension. You, you've known me for a long time. It's just kind of an extension of my real life stuff. You know, I'm always looking to mentor and, and, and help people out and, and kind of encourage them along the way. But um, a lot of questions I get are, how do you keep going? Like mm -hmm. nothing's happening how do you keep going? So what was the, what was the impetus to kind of like keep putting out those videos? And I, I love that Amy was just like giving you two years to like just hammer on it. Um, I, that must've been just so encouraging and just like that, that I, I love that. I love how much of a partnership you guys have. Um, and I, I would yeah. love to have her on here at some point too, but yeah, um, she, she's amazing. Um, I, and I think actually, the, the answer kind of aligns with who she is and what she does, which is accountability tends to be the thing that uh, keeps me on the line, keeps me going. So telling somebody I'm going to meet them for coffee at six in the morning and promising them I'm, I'm going to be there. It's it, all of a sudden there's weight to my actions. There's weight to my goals. Right. Um, similarly, like uh, I'm, I, you know, I could, I could just say like, yeah, I'm going to try to make a couple. But then after I'm, I've made a couple, I'm off the line. I'm off the hook for making more and continuing on. So telling somebody, um, hey, I'm going to do this for two years and keep me accountable while I do it. Uh, you know, she's the first one to rib me and say, you're not, are you like, why, why aren't you making a video this week? I mean, I can't tell you how many times she said that. And I've said, you know, like, well, I'm tired or, oh, there's too much noise at the office while I'm trying to record. She's like, stop whining and go find a different place then. Like why you, you said you were going to do this. Do you actually want to do it? Right. So like setting yourself up for success means setting yourself up for critique. In my opinion, I'm um, weird. Like I'm the type of person that like, if I want to go run, um, buying, actually buying a new pair of running shoes motivates me. Cause I'm like, I have to earn these. Like I just spent like 60 bucks on these running shoes. Like I can't just leave them sitting around unused. It makes, it makes me feel guilty to not follow through. So um, I'm more apt to follow through if I, if I put roadblocks in place of accountability. That's just me. If you, if you go all in on whatever it is you're doing, right, and <clears throat> you tell people and you, you have a financial investment like shoes or, or whatever it is, and the more, you, the more you kind of set yourself up for basically you set yourself up for failure in, in a glorious way, right? So yeah. it's like the more setting yourself up for failure that you do, I think the better you're going to, um, the more success you will probably have because there's so much social weight. There's so much personal, um, uh, just there's so much personal weight on what you have to do that, um, that you want to fully follow through and, and not just for yourself at that point. And then you're, you know, you're two videos in, it's like, oh, I already did two videos. Might as well do two right. more, you know, and, and let's see what this looks like in, in six months. And, and, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the ground running now, you know? Like a, put yourself I, in a position to embarrass yourself. Like that's, for me, that's one of the most motivating things. Like put it out into the Twitter sphere and all, and all on social media, tell all your friends, here's what I'm going to do, expect this from me. And then when you don't, like you're ashamed to walk in the room on, the, on your date that you said you were gonna accomplish that and go, oh, I didn't quite get there. So it just makes you think every day. Like, you know, I'm about, I'm, I'm gonna, my goal is to launch something in the first quarter. I have like a plan to launch something in the first quarter of 2020. Well, when January 1st comes, I'm gonna put it out there and say, 
guess what's coming on this day? Would you like to sign up pre-sale, like pre-orders are open and they're available. And all of a sudden people are gonna start putting money and buying something and pre-ordering something. Well, now I'm really on the hook. Now, yeah. <laughs> and I, I won't be able to let people down because there's, there's money involved, there's expectation involved there. So if, it's so easy for me to be lazy. That's probably one of my, the biggest things I battle with is being a perfectionist and never putting something out there because it's just not good enough versus challenging myself making other people expect things from me and launching with a minimum viable product of any, whatever it is and then just tweaking it and refining it after. So, you know, you, you want to make something perfect, you'll never put anything out. And so like, just tell everyone, embarrass the crap out of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about um, your transition from, because I, 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 we share a lot of similarities as far as like our perfectionism and, and just our, our, our lack of, I think, I have no desire to uh, work super hard, you know, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I will be, honesty. I, I would love to be, and I, I think I called it, I called entrepreneurs like the laziest people ever, you know, because like we don't want to really want to go anywhere. We don't really want to do what we don't want to do. But when we do, when we are doing what we do want to do, or we are working on our own thing, then we are, we're just, non-stop 24 7 all about obtaining the goals that we want the first talk about your first 10 videos and talk about like the mindset of like done is better than perfect and like putting it out instead of like polishing it you know like talk about that that kind of like mindset how you went through that i couldn't tell you like when it was or what it was or who it was that i heard it from but it was basically like just hurry up and make your first 50, like make your first 50 videos. So you can just get past it, put them behind you, yeah. put all of your effort into it. Cause every ounce of blood and sweat and effort you put into that, you're going to learn from that. Right. Um, but understand that like, you're not going to base your future or your career off that, that first tranche of work that you do. You just have to get through it. You have to get like past that point. I mean, I had never so, edited a video. I had never opened up a video editing software. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I had, <laughs> I think maybe I had used like iMovie and drug a few things around, but it was like, now you're going to make stuff for YouTube. Now you need to learn like how to put in those end scenes and what cards are and like write a description. I was like learning everything. So I would spend like just hours and hours and hours researching and reading like, what am I supposed to be doing here? Um, so I just started because I, I was told, and I, I think at some point you just have to choose to believe. Right? You can hear something like a million times, but at some point I had to choose to believe that this was a viable path forward and just had to tr like trudge through the mud for a little bit until I started getting my wits and my bearings about me. So that's why if you watch those first like 20, 30, 40 videos, they're like, I'm really awkward. Like I do the thing that everyone says not to, which is constantly look at myself in the flip out screen. I'm like, <laughs> I'm repeating myself. I'm so redundant and awkward. I was just, I think I was, like what I realized about myself was um, that I was trying to be like other people at first and I had to work towards being myself. So now she, she actually made the observation. She's like, I watched a bunch of your videos and the one, like the ones, like the first 10, 20, you're, you're very weird. You're very strange. But everything after that, you're like, what's up, everybody? I'm Jesse Shaw, you know? And she's like, what happened? I'm like, I just got comfortable in my own skin. I just realized like, you know what? I'm going to stop watching other people's videos and trying to be like them or try to reverse engineer their success, obviously, and be smart about it. But yeah. I'm just going to be me. And me is energetic. I talk with my hands. Like, I, I think fast. I talk fast. I move fast. Like, I'm, I tweak constantly. And you know, I've had people write in the comments, like, is that really you? And I'm like, just ask my wife. She tells me to chill out constantly. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just, I just, so I just got comfortable after a certain amount of time. And um, that, that did so much for me um, in my motivation. Cause then I didn't have to, there's one thing to like prepare a camera and gear and lights and set up to do something. There's another thing to prepare yourself to act like somebody you're not. It's so yeah. demanding. you don't want to do it. It's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go there. Like, and so I just wasn't filming videos and then it just clicked. And I was like, I guess I'm just going to be me. And I was like, Oh, this is easier, way easier to make content. <laughs> and <laughs> when I, when I'm not so overly self-conscious. Um, so as your channel started growing, um, when do you think start things started kind of this to 
meld for your content? Like, I know your content has kind of ebbed and flowed. It's kind of like, you know, not niche down. It's just, I think you found your groove at some point where you really knew who you were talking to and what you're going to be talking about. Like, when did that start happening? Was that around the same time? I think that was around the same time. Like, I just... um you know, there's a lot of strategies. And when you're first starting out, you just, you're reading everything and you're watching everybody else's YouTube videos, YouTube videos about making YouTube videos, which is the <laughs> stupidest thing ever. Um, and, you know, you're watching all this stuff and people will tell you like, don't make the content that you want to make, make the content that people want to see. You're like, okay, I guess we'll try that. And, and then, but then I would like fight back. I'm like, no, I want to make stuff that I want to make. And then it would get like one view. But if I made like a review about a product, after I did like some Google searching and that's like a hot topic, it'd get a little bit more. I'm like, all right, so it's, con it's this constant like balance of like, like, do I make, am I sacrificing? Can I be me? And so, yeah, somewhere right around that same time, I just started getting comfortable like making the type of content I wanted to make, which is like, I am actually kind of a software whore. So like I, <laughs> I, t I tend to download a lot of stuff, look at a lot of stuff. I love design software. I love playing with stuff. I'm not the best designer in the room, so I'm not going to sit there and say that I am. I'm not the most successful business person in the room, so I'm not going to give you some sort of high-level Chris Doe future business advice because I don't have it to give. So like all that comes down to like, that's not who I am. Who I am is I'm an encourager. Uh, I'm excited to show you stuff that I'm excited about. Um, I, I like telling stories. So I'll tell you about like my experiences. You take them with a grain of salt. And so somewhere in there, I like locked into like, all right, that's what it is. And I didn't, I didn't go out to be that. I just decided this is who I am. And my niche quote unquote found me, right? People were like, yeah. I love the way you present content. I get, you know, I get so many encouraging comments and from people who there's, 20 other videos about the same topic that I did, but for some reason they like mine because they like me and that's cool. Like I'm not for everybody because I've definitely got some negative comments too. <laughs> but like, I'm not, you know, everyone's like too loud, chill out. Like don't put so much grease in your hair. I'm like, all right, calm down. Bro. So like I'm not for everybody, but I am for some people. And, and yeah. I just, I just got, I got to be okay with that. <laughs> it's exciting, man. So, okay. So let's talk about um, family life. So, Amy's your wife. You have two kids. Yes, I do. Um, and uh, how old is, you have a daughter, how old? Uh, my daughter's nine and my son is eight. Yeah. Oof. Are they still battling? Times. They are awesome. They are amazing. <laughs> uh, and they are homeschooled. So they're obviously slightly socially awkward. Yeah. Um, but, but in like the best possible way, you know, they're yeah. really fun. Uh, like I took my son out today for like some guy time. We had lunch, had an in and out burger and, and just talked about Fortnite, the stuff he's into. And like, it was great. Um, and my daughter loves to read. She's super smart. She'll read like 500 page books in a weekend. Um, so they're cool. They're fun to hang out with. Yeah. And I work from home and my wife homeschools them. So we spent a lot of time together as a family, uh, which is, was really like my hope and my goal yeah. for this season of, of our life was I want, obviously I have stuff to do. Obviously I have to m make a living, but I want to do that in and around my, like in context of my family as much as possible. And it's been working out really great. That, uh, you've shown your office on your channel. Um, and it's mm -hmm. like, what, 20 yards from your house or something like that. Yep. It's uh, yeah. I could throw a pebble at my back door to my house. <laughs> so that's, so it's nice. It's slightly separate, but very much, you know, close. Uh, yeah, and, and we've I talked mean. about like just sometimes the family noise gets to the point where it's not, not too much for us to work or not too much mm -hmm. for us to do what we, we need to do, but it's, it almost kind of calls us to like wanting to be a part of what they're doing. Do you ever find right. yourself like kind of wishing you were kind of, out of your office and like playing outside or doing other things. Cause you hear some family noise. I think it's, it's much better now because it is so separate, you know, like I have to get my stuff in the morning and come out here and, and walk and open my door, close the door behind me. And I'm in a separate space. But for the first year that we were here, I was in an upstairs living room. That is the common area and the walkway Ooh, yeah. through, through the whole upstairs of the house. And I had a window and I could see out into, you know, neighborhood and so my kids would be out there playing so um for instance 
uh, you know, I see my daughter running into the house crying and she runs upstairs and collapses into my arms because some little girl out there told her she was stupid and ugly. And it, so like that pulls me away, right? Like it, it makes, it, it was much harder because I wanted to be so involved because they were always there. It didn't yeah. necessarily distract me from working. Like I could put my headphones on and crank and people could walk in and out. It would, sometimes it could get bad, but it, it was more like I can see them so much more. I, I want to go play with my kids. I want to go play sharks and minnows in the court. I want to, you know, comfort them when something happened. I mean, to be in the middle of editing a video or designing like an interface and look out and your son falls off his bike and hits his head on the ground, you're like, like, I know my wife's going to run out there and I know it'll be fine. It didn't look that bad, but I still want to be there. So yeah. <laughs> it does. It, it, there's a there's a, a give and, like give and take there. Um, and I think this has been a much better situation because they can come out to the office and interrupt me and sit on my lap and you know my daughter likes to sit on my lap and and help me design stuff. <laughs> but then they leave and then I get a lot more time. Yeah, yeah. with this new recently new arrangement that you're going to be having with um, work and things. Yeah. <laughs> Um, very recent, <laughs> very recent, fresh, so fresh, not so even, fresh. not even scabbing yet. You just, you yeah. kind of just skin that chin and there it is. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm still in slow motion falling up the bike. Like the wound is <laughs> oh, probably going to hit me more like later tonight, but right oh, now man. I'm just going towards the pavement. <laughs> um, Jesse and I actually used to work together at a, a small little, small little agency in Honolulu for a short, well, I was there for a very short time um, as the ship was kind of sinking <laughs> imme- like quickly. Um, but, uh, you know, very soon after that, we, every, everybody just kind of like left and jumped ship. But, yep. Um, so I've, I've kind of, we've, we've been through this, this place before <laughs> kind of together, <laughs> which is funny. Um, a few months ago, it was more than a few months, almost about a year ago now, okay. um, you were creating something new that uh-huh. you had to kind of put an end to because it kind of conflicted with your, your full-time yeah. job. So mm-hmm. are you looking to maybe reinvigorate that, reimagine that? Um, is that where you're going to be going into kind of like a more private teaching kind of space or... Um, Where do you think, where do you kind of see yourself? And that was kind of earlier to what I had said. It's something that I put a goal on myself. I put it out there. Um, I had people sign up. I was responsible for it. And then I kind of, one of those things, I'm not actually, (laughs) I'm not actually sorry for it. It ended up being a conflict of interest, but I'm, I do agree that it's always better to say sorry than like ask for forgiveness than permission. So um, I ended up having to ask for forgiveness. It was fine. The whole thing got shut down. So I won't, I don't think I'm going to be going back directly into that. I think that that was actually a really good learning lesson for me in a lot of different ways. Number one, there's a lot of aspects of that project that I really love. Um, And, you know, so it's not shrouded in mystery. It was like a creative community kind of thing where people could sign up, join. And I was going to just facilitate just this rad community where there was monthly challenges and encouragement, all that kind of stuff. And I like that. But um, I think what I'm learning is that it's not, I want to do something that's more scalable. I want to do something where I love, I love Chris Doe, his goal of teaching a billion people. And I'm not as ambitious as him, but I don't want to limit myself um, with the amount of people that maybe I am able to reach with my message of encouragement and education and community. So I don't want to limit that by how much time I'm able to spend on something. So I have different ideas in place on how I can, you know, uh, systematize things and make myself available in other ways that would be helpful and beneficial to people. So I think that's like the beauty of, of the, the, the time of life that we live in the internet connection availability. It's like, I can, instead of selling my time, um, I can sell, my my thought process more and that's what i want to do um and i don't know exactly how that's going to work or how it's going to play out i got some time you know i have some runway um and we're 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 taken care of and we're blessed um that we are not in a panic right now so like we have some time to think about things but i'm definitely going to be at the same time hedging all bets and revamping my resume and 
you know, <laughs> actually spending some time on my website that's like 12 years old and hasn't been touched and looks atrocious oh, yeah, and doesn't reflect right. me anymore. Don't go to Jesse Showalter. Do <laughs> not thing. do that. that you, you probably all will because, you know, five people are going to watch this and say immediately go yeah. there and shut so, you down. But. but that thing's a hot mess, right? And it's like, <laughs> it's, time, it's time to probably spend some time, go back in and revamp those things and not, and use that as a catalyst of sorts to say like, okay, this is my jumping off point. Um, and I'm going to dive in and do different stuff with it. So I think yeah. it's, I think it's like time for me to pull a Madonna and reinvent myself. Oh, you know? here we go. And just rebranding. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> rebranding. Just spend the time. Spend the time. And the old Jesse Showalter. Kind of spend yeah, some time. Care, care about me. It's me go. time. <laughs> yeah. Talked about a little Dave, bit about jiu-jitsu. when's the last time when's the last time you met somebody and the the day that you met them they were like totally lost my job today. <laughs> <laughs>